This is where, where uh, a lot of activity happened in the Bible. Uh, in fact, uh, Moses was out <laughs> minding his own business with uh, a flock of sheep when uh, God appears to him in a burning bush. While the mount's exact location has long been debated, its biblical significance cannot be overstated. Every year, millions of Muslims worldwide gather in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, to perform the Hajj pilgrimage, one of the five pillars of Islam. The nation is home to the two holiest cities in Islam, Mecca and Medina, as well as the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad. However, there is a little-known aspect of Saudi Arabia's history that has recently been uncovered by atheists, this revelation could potentially challenge religious doctrines and shake the foundations of all three Abrahamic faiths. What did atheists recently find and how could it impact the beliefs surrounding Mount Sinai? Join us as we unravel what atheists just discovered in Saudi Arabia that has shocked the entire world. For a book that has been around for over 2,700 years, the Bible holds a significant place in human history. It has influenced countless people and shaped entire cultures throughout the centuries. Yet, even with its enduring credibility, scholars and theologians have grappled with the challenges of verifying certain claims and locations mentioned in its pages. One such mysterious place is Mount Sinai, often referred to as the Mountain of Moses. According to tradition, Mount Sinai is the hallowed ground where Moses received the Ten Commandments from God as described in the Hebrew Bible's Book of Exodus, chapters 19 and 20. Unsurprisingly, the search for the real Mount Sinai has captivated the minds of explorers and scholars for centuries. For a long time, the prevailing belief pointed to Jebel Musa, located in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula, as the true Mount Sinai. However, an unexpected discovery made by certain atheists has recently suggested a connection between the Sacred Mountain and Saudi Arabia. At first glance, this discovery may seem highly improbable. However, emerging evidence is beginning to substantiate this claim, potentially unraveling a secret that has been closely guarded by Saudi authorities. Keep watching as we explore this shocking revelation that has the potential to alter strongly held beliefs by Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Before we get into the juicy details of what atheists found in Saudi Arabia, Let's take a proper look at this sacred mountain. The first thing you should know about Mount Sinai is that it holds sentimental value for Jews, Christians, and even Muslims. It is the sacred mountain where God chose to reveal himself to Moses and present him with the Ten Commandments. This holy place served as a crucial site where God communicated his will and guidance to his chosen prophet. It was on this very mountain that God led his people out of captivity in Egypt, under the rule of the Pharaoh. Moses had numerous encounters with God on Mount Sinai, culminating in the momentous occasion when he received the Ten Commandments. This sacred mountain also serves as the backdrop for a significant portion of the first five books of the Bible. However, the exact location of Mount Sinai has been a subject of ongoing debate. Early Christian traditions placed it at modern-day Mount Serbal, the fifth largest mountain in Egypt. In the 6th century, historian Josephus argued that Mount Catherine, the highest mountain in Egypt, was the true biblical location. Later, in the 9th century, a Georgian colony settled in the area surrounding the modern Mount Sinai on the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt, constructing their own churches. Some Georgian manuscripts from that time still reside there, while others are held in private collections. Despite these various claims, a definitive consensus on the precise location of Mount Sinai remains elusive. Some argue that it could be situated in Saudi Arabia, as Moses fled in that direction during his exile. Archaeologist Emmanuel Anati proposes an alternate theory, suggesting that Har Karkom, a two 700-foot ridge in the southern Negev, is the biblical Sinai. Anati supports his assertion by pointing to rock art found at this location, which he believes contains biblical motifs. Anati's theory found support from Professor Menashe Har-El, an Israeli geographer and biblical scholar. Professor Har-El examined the biblical text, analyzing passages from the book of Exodus, such as Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 and 2, which describe Moses tending to sheep near Horeb, the mountain of God. He argued that this description aligns with the geography of the southern part of the Negev Desert, 
where suitable grazing areas for sheep are found. To further strengthen his case, he highlighted the distinctive topographical features of Jebel Karim, a mountain in the central Negev that resembles a volcanic peak, mirroring the biblical depiction of Mount Sinai enveloped in smoke and fire. Professor Harel also delved into other biblical references to Mount Sinai, focusing on Exodus chapter 19 verses 1 and 2. These verses state that the Israelites arrived at Sinai after leaving Rephidim and passing through the desert of Sinai. Harel proposed that Rephidim could be identified with a location in the central Negev known as Pharon Oasis. According to his theory, this would place Sinai near Rephidim, providing further support for his hypothesis. In addition to textual analysis, Professor Har El considered archaeological evidence in the Negev region. He noted the presence of several ancient sites that could potentially be linked to the biblical events at Mount Sinai, adding weight to his argument. Despite these compelling arguments, the quest to determine the precise location of the biblical Mount Sinai continues. The debate persists, with scholars and researchers exploring various possibilities and examining historical, textual, and archaeological evidence. All of that should come to an end with the recent discovery made by atheists in Saudi Arabia. But here is the question on everyone's mind. What was found in Mount Sinai? Recently, atheists have made significant discoveries about the sacred mountain of Mount Sinai. Experts now believe they have located one of the holiest sites in the Bible, miles away from its previously assumed location. According to their claims, they have found the actual mountain where Moses led the Israelites, a place described in the Old Testament as being enveloped in smoke, fire, and thunder. It is on this mountain's summit that Moses received the Ten Commandments from God. The mountain in question is Jabal Makla, situated within the Jabal al Laws mountain range in northwestern Saudi Arabia. The Bible states that God descended upon Mount Sinai as a fire, and the atheists argue that Jabal Makla's distinctively blackened peaks suggest that this is the actual site. One Middle East expert commented that one of the main reasons scholars dismiss the Exodus as a myth is due to the lack of evidence found at the traditional Mount Sinai in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. However, what if these scholars have been searching in the wrong place? By shifting their focus to the Arabian Peninsula, they would encounter incredibly compelling evidence that aligns with the biblical account. Jabal Makla's blackened peaks, as if scorched by the sun or fire, serve as one such piece of evidence. This mountain is also located near Nueva Beach, where scientists have discovered land paths beneath the water. These underwater land paths are believed to be the routes through which God parted the waters for Moses and the Israelites as described in the biblical narrative. These discoveries challenge previous assumptions and prompt a re-evaluation of our understanding of Mount Sinai's location. The newfound evidence supports the notion that Mount Sinai may indeed be situated in northwestern Saudi Arabia, rather than in the traditional location in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. As with any archaeological or historical investigation, Further research and analysis will be necessary to corroborate these findings and deepen our understanding of this ancient and sacred mountain. It is important to note that these discoveries have sparked debate and differing interpretations among scholars and experts. As with any topic of religious or historical significance, multiple perspectives and ongoing research contribute to a more nuanced understanding of Mount Sinai's true location. Signs of Path Under Red Sea According to the book of Exodus, Moses used his walking stick to part the waters, allowing the Israelites to escape. As the story goes, the pursuing Egyptian troops were then engulfed by the rushing waters when they attempted to follow. Recent studies have led experts to believe that Nueva Beach is the most probable location for this crossing. These studies have revealed submerged land paths beneath the water, suggesting a potential route for the Israelites. Furthermore, Researchers claim to have discovered intriguing formations beneath the water's surface, which they believe resemble the shapes of chariots encased in coral. Although the metal and wood of the chariots have long since dissolved, these formations provide a compelling link to the biblical account of the Egyptian army's demise in the Red Sea. Additionally, there is alleged evidence that may correspond to the biblical campsite of Elam, 
which was said to have had 12 wells and 70 palm trees. Remarkably, some of these water sources still exist today, adding credibility to the claim. These findings and interpretations have sparked considerable interest and debate among scholars and researchers studying the Exodus narrative. The journey of the Israelites after crossing the Red Sea is described in the biblical narrative. According to the account, after reaching the land on the other side of the water, the pursuing Egyptian army was consumed by the sea. In this context, experts have identified a large split rock with signs of water erosion on the way from the beach to the possible location of Mount Sinai. These experts believe that this distinct landmark could be the rock that God commanded Moses to strike, resulting in water miraculously gushing forth to provide for the Israelite population. The presence of water erosion on the rock adds weight to this hypothesis. Furthermore, researchers have discovered a site near the base of the mountain that resembles an altar, similar to the altar Moses is said to have built at the foot of Mount Sinai using cut stones. This finding aligns with the biblical account and provides additional support for the theory that this could be the actual location. Rephidim, where Moses and the Israelites initially camped before reaching Mount Sinai, is situated at the western end or back of the mountain. It was at Rephidim that Moses struck a rock, causing a significant amount of water to gush out. The giant 60-foot-tall rock is located on a 300-feet-high hill and displays clear signs of water disintegration. The harsh desert surroundings make the presence of such a significant rock formation even more remarkable. The crack in the rock is described as being large enough for an adult to quickly pass through it, adding to the awe-inspiring nature of the discovery. Golden Calf Worship Site Jabal Musa boasts an ancient altar site consisting of rough granite stones at the foot of the mountain. Additionally, there are remnants of small, ancient pillars made of marble next to them. Interestingly, this correlates with the biblical account in the Book of Exodus, where Moses supposedly constructed an altar using uncut stones and set up twelve pillars to represent the twelve tribes of Israel. So far, researchers have discovered nine pillars, along with several broken pieces of marble scattered throughout the area. There are two other significant pieces of evidence found on this mountain. Firstly, what is believed to be the site where the golden calf was worshipped, and secondly, signs of a graveyard. In Exodus chapter 32, there is a mention of the golden calf incident, where the Israelites fashioned a golden calf, an Egyptian deity, and worshipped it while Moses was on Mount Sinai. When Moses descended the mountain, those who worshipped the golden calf were punished for their idolatry. Near the mountain, we find a site adorned with depictions of people worshipping bulls and cows, which is quite remarkable. These petroglyphs are exclusive to this area and not spread throughout the entire mountain. Moreover, twelve ancient Jewish petroglyphs featuring a recognizable bull and depictions of Egyptian half-gods have been discovered. The pagan petroglyphs were worshipped by the Jews while they anxiously awaited Moses' return from the mountaintop. Legend has it that the golden calf was placed on these rocks. Additionally, large altars have been found on the east and west sides of the mountain. These archaeological findings align well with the biblical accounts. However, researchers face challenges as part of the area is fenced off for protection by the Saudi authorities. Nonetheless, they plan to conduct more expeditions to Saudi Arabia and other potential locations to further investigate evidence of the Exodus. The question remains, which mountain is the real Mount Sinai? Setting aside the discoveries about Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, let's refer to the Bible to understand its perspective on the location of this sacred mountain. The truth is, nobody knows for certain. For centuries, scholars, explorers, and pilgrims have sought the true location of Mount Sinai. Several sites have been proposed, but none have been confirmed archaeologically as the place where God met with Moses. However, the Bible provides some general clues about its whereabouts. We know that Mount Sinai was situated outside of Egypt since the Israelites arrived there after leaving Egypt, as mentioned in Exodus 19. 1. Scripture also suggests that Mount Sinai was not in Midian, as Moses' Midianite in-laws returned to their own land as described in Exodus 18.27 and Numbers 10.29.31. 31. 
The traditional site of Mount Sinai is in the south-central part of the Sinai Peninsula, currently known as Jebel Musa. This mountain, standing at an elevation of 2,762 feet above sea level, is home to St. Catherine's Monastery, built in AD 530 at the northern base of Mount Sinai. At its peak, you'll find a Christian chapel and an Islamic mosque. The ancient library at Jebel Musa was the source of Codex Sinaiticus, one of the major Greek texts used in Bible translation. Other proposed locations for Mount Sinai include sites in the western, central, and northern parts of the Sinai Peninsula. Some theories identify Mount Sinai as modern-day Mount Yeroham in the northern Negev Desert. Others suggest Sinai is in southern Edom, or SE, as mentioned in Deuteronomy 33, 2. Another viewpoint places Mount Sinai in northwestern Saudi Arabia, associating it with the mountain called Jabal Makla, or Jabal al-Laws. Interestingly, in Galatians 4.25, Paul mentions Mount Sinai in Arabia. It's important to note that Arabia in ancient times encompassed a vast area, including what we now refer to as Saudi Arabia and the Sinai Peninsula. So where exactly is the real Mount Sinai? Nobody can say definitively. Scholars hold differing opinions on proposed sites. Even if some scientists believe that Mount Sinai is located in Saudi Arabia, they still require more time to gather evidence and substantiate their claims. Forgotten Mountain of God Throughout history, there has been an ongoing debate about the true location of the Mountain of God, and over time, the memory of its whereabouts has faded. The reasons behind this lapse in recollection are complex and controversial. Emperor Constantine, influenced by his mother, Queen Helena, who embraced elements of both Christian and pagan religions, moved the Roman Empire towards Christian rule. Queen Helena constructed monuments around sacred biblical sites, including one believed to be the location of the burning bush and Mount Sinai. Despite never setting foot on the land, she claimed that Mount Sinai was situated in the Egyptian peninsula. For centuries, no one dared to question the queen. And as a result, this became the traditional site of Mount Sinai on the Sinai Peninsula. However, this traditional location did not align with the description provided in the Bible. This discrepancy made it challenging for scholars to piece together the archaeological evidence, leading to doubts about the authenticity of the Exodus story itself. The influence of traditions and translations, along with human error, steered us away from the truth causing us to progressively forget the miraculous events surrounding the Exodus and the work of Yahweh. Remembering what we have forgotten is actually quite simple. We need to turn to the ultimate source of truth, the written word of God found in the Bible. The Bible clearly identifies the location of a body of water mentioned in several places, specifically indicating the Gulf of Aqaba in the Red Sea, which borders Saudi Arabia. For instance, in the Book of Kings, it is written, And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezion Geber, which is beside Eloth on the shore of the Red Sea, Yam Suf, in the land of Edom. The city of Ezion Geber is mentioned six times in the Old Testament and was situated on the north coast of the Gulf of Aqaba, a part of the historical and current Red Sea. So why is a location that is clearly stated in the Bible easily misunderstood and confused? To gain wisdom and understanding, we can turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, a prophet from Judah in the 7th century BCE, admonished God's people for adopting pagan cultures and religious practices. In Isaiah chapter 65, he speaks of God's people forgetting his holy mountain. Forgetting goes beyond simply not recalling. It also implies forgetting the significance of what happened there, such as their covenant with God and their marriage to him after their exile. The focus of the rededicated Jews was primarily on rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem, and Mount Sinai ceased to be regarded as a holy mountain, leading to the disappearance of its memory. As scholars and academics continue to uncover new archaeological evidence, the remembrance of Mount Sinai is being revived. These discoveries have led to the ancient land of Midian, located across the Red Sea in northern Saudi Arabia. Local inhabitants have referred to a particular summit in this region as the Mountain of Moses. In the past, access to this area was prohibited, and the mountain, known as Jabal al-Laws, was only spoken of by those who lived in the vicinity. 
Scientists are diligently working to unravel the truth about Mount Sinai and its significance. Mount Sinai holds great importance in the biblical narrative. It is the place where the Israelites, led by God in the form of a cloud by day and a fire by night, were brought from captivity in Egypt. On the mountain, God instructed Moses to climb to receive a covenant for the Israelite people. The people witnessed lightning, clouds, and heard God speaking the Ten Commandments to Moses, an awe-inspiring and terrifying experience. Subsequently, the Israelites requested that they no longer hear God's voice directly, but instead obey whatever God communicated through Moses. Moses agreed to their request and ascended the mountain alone, where God imparted the law to him. Moses then returned to the people and shared these laws before eventually putting them into writing. After receiving instructions from God on how to construct the tabernacle, Moses heads back up the mountain to receive two stone tablets inscribed by God himself. During Moses' absence, however, the Israelites, in an act of unfaithfulness, created a golden calf to worship in place of God. When Moses finally receives the stone tablets and prepares to descend the mountain, God informs him of the Israelites' transgressions and declares that he will let them perish. Moved by compassion, Moses pleads with God not to destroy the people. He delays his return and asks for mercy. Upon descending the mountain, Moses shatters the tablets and destroys the golden calf. Once the crisis passes, God commands Moses to create a new set of tablets and ascend the mountain so that God can inscribe them personally. When Moses finally descends again, the Israelites are filled with fear as his face radiates the glory of God. Mount Sinai holds immense significance as the place where Moses physically communed with God while leading the Israelites out of captivity. The mountain is known by three other names that further define its importance. First is Har Ha Elohim, meaning the mountain of God. Second is Har Bashan, which signifies that through this mountain, humankind receives sustenance. The third name is Har Gebnunim, or the mountain of the sword, as the Sanhedrin had the authority to pass death sentences through this mountain. The primary significance of Mount Sinai stems from the fact that it is the location where God bestowed His law upon His people. Mountains are frequently mentioned in Scripture as places where God reveals Himself. Throughout the Old Testament, God invites people to meet Him in the mountains. Noah is saved from the flood on a mountain, Moses encounters God on the mountain, and Elijah experiences God's presence on Mount Horeb. In the New Testament, Jesus retreats to the mountains for rest, appoints his disciples on a mountainside, delivers sermons on the Mount of Olives, and appears to his disciples after his resurrection on a mountain in Galilee. Mountains serve as stable and unchanging symbols, reminding us that God remains constant through all time and that we can rely on him. Interestingly, Jesus speaks of moving mountains through our faith, as mentioned in Matthew 17:20. While this may seem impossible by human standards, God wants us to understand that with Him, all things are possible. Though God appeared to Moses in a predictable and immovable location, He accomplished the impossible by providing His people with a new covenant that guarantees our identity as His chosen ones. In our own lives, we encounter moments where we witness God's unmistakable work, much like Moses did on the mountaintop. We also experience seasons where we may feel distant from God and are tempted to construct our own idols. Each character in this ancient story reflects aspects of our own journey, and we find solace in knowing that God's presence and plan are relatable. He can accomplish the impossible even when we find ourselves in the valleys of life. He continually paves a way forward for us. Today, there is ongoing debate about the historical location of Mount Sinai. However, even if one were to climb Mount Sinai, it would not bring them closer to God. God is not confined to a specific location. If anything, such a climb should remind the spiritual pilgrim of how often they have violated the laws that were delivered on that mountain. Drawing near to God can only be achieved through faith in Christ. Climbing mountains will not accomplish this. Those who are in Christ have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. Despite their imperfections, they are not condemned. Christ, who is worthy of greater honor than Moses, fulfilled the law, and through him, we are set free from the law of sin and death. God accomplished what the law, weakened by human flesh, could not achieve, 
by sending his son to condemn sin and fulfill the righteous requirements of the law. As believers, we walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, guided by the law of the Spirit of life. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the other videos you see on your screen right now.